Oh, this is wrong. Oh, this is all wrong. Oh no. <laughs> so full disclosure, I made a mistake. I built this entire wall incorrectly. I did 32 inch centers and I should have done 24 inch center spacing of the studs. Uh, I, it didn't occur to me while I was building the wall that it was wrong. It didn't occur to me when I stood it up and stood back and admired it that it was wrong. And it didn't occur to me when I put a gazillion screws in there and they weren't lining up with the existing siding that it was wrong. It didn't occur to me until I built this wall over here. And that one's wrong as well. I'm gonna leave the, the big wall in place and redo the smaller wall because that one I can get done here fairly quickly. This big wall, Unfortunately, it's just gonna stay where it's at. It's got too many screws to take out and, and try to redo. And 24 inch center spacing is what I should have done. It was a mistake on my part. I am gonna fix this wall. I'm gonna do the two remaining walls correctly. I don't know what I was thinking. I even have it written down on a piece of paper and I still screwed it up. So hopefully that will help you if you're in a similar boat to avoid making the same mistake. So let's get back to work and uh, fix what we did wrong so we can start making new mistakes, right? Welcome to the second video in the Shop Edition build series. So yeah, I started this day by replacing the studs from that short wall with brand new 2x4s and this time installed them with the correct spacing, 24 inches on center. The reason the spacing is crucial is so that the seams of the sheathing and the siding as well as the rafters can all line up on the studs. And later in the video, I'll be adding more studs to that long wall so that they fall on the 24 inch on center marks and be able to carry the load of the rafters above. That wall will end up having way more framing than is necessary, but you know, more is better than not enough. And don't worry, only you, me, and anyone who goes inside will ever notice. So basically, I guess the whole world will see my mistake. Ah, well, you know, that's okay. So unfortunately, I'm going to have a stud that falls right on this seam, and I don't want that. So I'm going to scab in a 2x4 that spans the length of the section between the two studs, uh, and then I'll attach the stud off of this 2x4 here. So I already threw in some screws, cut this guy to length. Now I'm just going to add some liquid nails to the backside for added security throw a clamp on and I'll screw it in from both sides. Now my stud will actually come off of this two by four here. So I just got to extend my line. And then that two by four will go that way. So it'll be a little bit shorter because of the uh, thickness of this two by four, but I think that fixes the problem of having a stud right on your seam. So probably poor planning on my part. I attached the wall to the base with deck screws, but we'll go back and add structural screws in the future. I saved the hardest wall for last because I really wasn't sure how I was going to do it until I actually started building it. I wanted the door opening to be as tall as possible, but couldn't really plan it out until I started figuring out the pitch of the rafters.
camera. I made this door frame header here. It's a two by four with a second two by four and a sheet of plywood sandwiched in between with uh, liquid nails and screws. That sits on top of the, the wall studs and will handle any bit of load coming down off of the rafter and keep the door frame from sagging. The double top plate was added to tie the walls together and it really does make the structure a lot stronger. A lot stronger now. Yes, doctor, I literally just said that. Now the rafters are gonna go right up under the overhang of the existing roof. So I had to cut the metal roofing back several inches in order to get it to fit. Not the most fun job, throwing sparks in 103 degree heat. And here I'm tracing the door frame onto the rafter in order to cut it out. This rafter is going to be different from all the others because it'll fit right into the framing of the door. I also angle cut the end to match up with the existing wall and then cut two bird's mouths or notches that allow the rafter to fit onto the top plates of the wall framing. The cuts were started with a circular saw and then finished by hand with a pole saw. And there you can see how it fits. Then I use that rafter as a template to mark all the cut lines for the remaining rafters, minus of course the cutout for the door opening. I really have no idea what this pitch is since it was all built in place. I just need it to be strong enough to be able to hold any snow load during the time it takes for it to melt, and I'm confident that it will. Uh, looks like there's a storm coming. I'm about half done with rafters, so let's see how many more I can get done before I get rained out. And I gotta work tomorrow. I can't win. I measured and marked for the placement of the rafters, and if you guessed it was 24 inches on center, you would be exactly right. Now I had a lot of challenges with this build when it came to the rain, the wind, the heat, the mistakes, and something else I don't normally talk about on this channel, and that's a physical limitation as well. I do have a neck injury that flares up from time to time. It has been hurting me a lot lately, so I took a few days off to rest it, and I'm gonna try to get some more rafters done today, but I've gotta take it easy or I'm gonna have a full flare up. So I don't want that. Uh, let's see how many I can get done as stiff as I am today before uh, having to call it quits. So let's get after it. My neck is injured and I've had surgery, but it's not better. So I get flare ups, especially when I do too much. And I'm extremely proud of the work I've been able to do in this project, but I definitely pushed it too far at times. When that happens, I have to stop and rest until I can work once again. Yeah, probably not gonna last very long. Luckily, I've found some pretty creative ways over the years to help me accomplish a lot of difficult tasks. Most of all, listening to the pain is one of the best ways to know when it's time to stop, no matter what. That said, I am, again, pretty proud of this project. Two more rafters are done. I'm gonna head inside now and uh, ice my neck because it is screaming. Ah, maybe have a smoothie too. So it's beautiful out, it's sunny, and there's rain in the forecast. So I'm gonna try to get as many more rafters done as I can before 
that puts an end to my work today. It's always something, but you know what? That's what's great about working outside. Here I am adding in those extra studs to the existing wall right underneath the rafters. Again, 24 inch on center spacing, if, you know, oh well. Guess it's a good thing I learned best from my mistakes. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for being here and I really hope to catch you on the next video. Until then, please take care and stay safe. Goodbye. Oh, this thing? It's a cooling wet rag thing. It, uh, you, you dunk it in water, put it on your neck, and it, it keeps you cool while keeping the sun off your neck. It's like a dual purpose. Yeah, it's pretty handy. My wife got it, and I love it. Cooling wet rag things. Pick yours up today, wherever they're sold, so you can get back to doing what you love or hate. Doesn't really matter, as long as you're outside when it's hot, not cold, because that wouldn't really make any sense, would it? Cooling wet rag things, get yours today. Or don't, I don't really care. See, I don't understand. How do I not have a sponsor yet? I've shown time and time again what I can bring to the table. I can sell products, I do projects, I don't make mistakes. I don't understand.